you know what I really hate? Because you come to pull yourself off a beer, and then you look at the regular and you say, that bloody bottle's out of gas. That's one of the most hateful things that can ever happen. There's only one thing worse, and that is when exactly the same thing happens less than a month later. And that's what is exactly what has happened here. I have managed to get rid of this entire bottle of gas in, I don't know, three, just over three weeks. Unbelievable. So, I'm going to do something about it today. This is my setup then, so just basically going into there, into the side, and then into that manifold. And I believe that this is where all the problems have. You can see that I keep having to wrap plumber's tape around it, but the main issue for me is that I've always found now is that unless, unless it's sitting exactly at a certain point, don't know what that certain point is unless you have the gas and you're spraying stuff on it to see the bubbles but it has to be exactly right otherwise it starts bubbling out the top all the time and it's the same for all of those all of those taps and you can wrap tape around it it'll fix it for a little while but it'll go back to normal now there might be something to be said for the barbs as well we're losing something there there's barbs there there's a barb there so i've just got i've got fed up with it um, the last bottle broke me and I decided I wanted to do something about it now the bloody next bottle has gone so let me show you what I'm gonna do okay forgive the angle it's it's all I can do I can't find the best position for the camera so try to ignore the fact that this is upside down okay this is what we've got from Keglan Probably should have opened this before I started taking a video, but sure. So these are inline regulators. Come in a nice little triangular package. Okay, let's have a look. So I got these from the Kegland store on AliExpress. I got wired off to them by Eric from Crucefoot Brewery. Cheers, Eric. Um, he has exactly the same ones. I couldn't believe the price of them. So these cost six pound eighty each, and with shipping that was I got four of them for thirty four pound. Now you can buy a secondary regulator, inline regular, for about thirty four pound. I think the cheapest I saw from UK companies was something like twenty five or twenty six, something like that. So there's a hell of a difference. Now, it did take three weeks to get here, to be fair, but it is the week before Christmas, so I don't mind. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. Let's get it out of the bag. Okay, so there's an in and there's an out. So, not sure what this is. This is maybe the the blow off at the front, is it? Yeah, that'll screw in there. It'll just relieve the pressure. Presumably, that just fits in like that. No instructions. Like, I mean, who needs instructions? There's like literally three parts to it. Come on. Oh yeah, so you can change the pressure then obviously using the top and then if you do it the other way you can relieve the pressure. Okay, seems pretty simple. Now the only thing is that these are 5 sixteenths. 5 sixteenths in proper money is 8 mils. It's outer diameter. So warning, this is a secondary regulator. This regulator will still require a primary regulator to drop your cylinder pressure down to 150 psi or less. Which is what we've got. Um, no, nothing else on it. Okay, so I've got four, four of these. Don't they didn't provide any screws? I'm sure I can find screws from somewhere in here. I've got any amount of stuff. So I've got four kegs. Each is going to have its own pressure regulator. Now the way it's set up now is you've just seen in the manifold. 
I have three on the top and I have the fourth one. The fourth one is a spur one. So if I, I have the fourth keg, which I don't have in, I've actually got it sitting on the side. Usually the fourth keg that I have is something that I'm conditioning or aging or something like that. So it's not on top all the time. What it is, it's available for top, but I don't have it um, hooked up to the gas. So I have the option of either putting them kind of like that across, maybe on that back wall, or putting them kind of vertically, like that. Um, I have plenty of space around here on the walls for doing whatever the hell we want. So that's not gonna be a problem. So say it just for handiness sake, like we'll have more room doing it like this. So let's say we have it like this. Doesn't really matter what way it is. So we've got the the normal regulator. The normal regulator goes into three eighth tubing, which is this. That'll have to go on to a reducer to get it onto the five sixteenths because that's what fits these. So there'll be one reducer there. So going in three eighths and coming out five sixteenths. Then we've got these little T connectors. So that will be, so imagine the pipe going across here. So the tube will go from there to there. And then there'll be another tube down there. And then I can feed the main line across there. Feed the main line across to the third one. And then for the fourth one, I have a T-bar, because I was considering getting more at a later date, not now. But I think for the time being, I'm gonna have a, a right angle. And this is a right angle, 5 sixteenths. So that's going to be going down there. So the main line is going to be going from the keg right across the top and then down into the fourth keg. They'll all be coming down into that. And then obviously there'll be a pipe coming out of here. The tube, the 5 sixteenths tube, will need more of the reducers. But instead of reducing, it's going to be going from 5 sixteenths up to three eighths. Because three eighths is what is on. It's what's on my quick release. Okay, quick update then. So I had to run and get a new bottle of gas. I wasn't joking about that. I did actually run out of gas. So this is where we are. So I've kind of, I'm trying to work out where on earth I'm going to put these things. Um, I had originally thought I would just put them along here. I don't know. Um, so this is the inside and that's the outside. So it's going in, the gas is going in there and coming out the other side. So the way it's sitting there, my gas bottle always sits down here and it points that way. So, I mean, I, all I need is for the gas lead just to reach across the back. And then up there, I don't know if this is the final location. I've just put them in like with little nails just to see what it's like. Going in there and then the out will be coming down here. I figured that it would be better if I rather than coming in I, I, I'm thinking there but I'm thinking if it's coming in there that's too close you don't want bent that kind of um, hard tubing if you bend it and put the gas on it'll lick you can hear it going so that's out so it kind of needs to come in from that side the way the other one was and then going across, so I think I can feed it, say, around the back of that. I mean, I don't really see that anyway, that bit, because it's covered. And then that can go round, and then probably in the side or in round the back. Maybe they're coming in. Drill a few holes, coming through, and that might work. Okay, one little bit of a problem there, you can see it bubbling away. 
That's a weird looking right angle. What is this kind of thing for? I don't know. I might have to take it apart and see why. I don't know why this bit's. You can screw it off. It's weird. But, um. Yeah, well, worst case is, I can maybe order another part. I can just connect that to that, and that'll be it sorted, so it's not a big deal. Okay, I've just um, made them a bit more compact. Squeezed them down a little bit. Um, I'm still not overly keen about the the lines going out on that side, but I, I don't really have an option, because I can't put it down the ways, because I can't get it in the back because obviously if there's not an awful lot of space there so um, it'll just have to do like that you can actually take the front off screw that off and change turn the gauge around whatever way you want but I think for me that's gonna have to be like that and you can see there I've just literally connected that to that that will do rightly um, so I've turned the gas on okay we'll maybe crank the Crank it up a bit. It's on the right 10 PSA there, it's not very good. And let's see what happens. Something's bound to go wrong here now. I mean, this is me we're talking about. You can hear the gas. So yeah, set it about 20, 20 PSA. That's enough for, get it nice and fizzy for the check pills there. So that's number two, so Set up to go one, two, three, four. So if we crank up number two, everything's connected inside, isn't it? Uh, one, two, yeah, it rings on. So it should be, it should be as simple as just turning this handle on, this will go up. You can see the PSA goes up to 60. I think you can get these and they go up to like, 25 or something like that. Checked all the fittings, they seem to be okay. Um, do my dirty hands. Okay, that seems to be working. I mean, you would expect it to work. That's the whole point of it. So yeah, you can see it's going up. 20 or so. Maybe not. And then let's bring it down. Pretty attain. Okay. Number one then. What have we got on? Black IPA. This is uh, about 14 or 15. This is good. I like this. And number three. What have we got in there? We've got a bitter. Well, sorry. We've got a scotchy ale. We've got a heavy. A wee heavy in there. So we don't want too much on that. Just say about 10 PSA would do well. Okay, there's not much else to do except for check it in the morning just to make sure there's no leaks and that gas tank isn't empty. But uh, yeah, that's it. I'll be home every Wednesday. See you next time. I mean, even though the gas is on, so I do have a fourth keg down here somewhere. It's one of these two. Um, but let's leave it for like that for the time being. Well, hello. Focus. Focus your arsehole. It's completely low. Look at the state of this. Jesus Christ. You know, the stuff.